people pleasers out there? Yeah, okay, a lot of us are. <laughs> so look, if you approach your brand only with how others perceive you in this business, you will get bitter and jaded and burnt out. And look, everyone wants to tell you who you are and who you should be. They do. Has anyone ever said to you, um, oh, you should do voiceover, you have a great voice, or you should play the power roles, or you should be the victim roles, or you should be the douchebag, you're totally the douchebag, right? Everyone wants to tell you who you are. And as people pleaser actors who want to work, we're like, uh, okay, just tell me who I am, tell me who you want me to be, and I'll do it. And then we start to put on all of this armor, right, to be this thing. Hi there, I'm Jody Bentley, actor, producer, and career coach. And I've been coaching actors on the business of acting as well as branding for over 12 years now. And today, I wanna to share with you the three branding traps that most actors fall into, as well as how to get out of them. And I just let me say first uh, off the bat that I get it. You are probably totally sick of hearing the word branding. You just want to be the versatile freaking actor that you are, right? I understand. And I have to say that most people are talking about branding incorrectly, okay? Branding is not one thing. It is not limiting. It's not your type. Branding, when done correctly, is completely encompassing and expansive of how that you want to show up in the world as well as how you are perceived. Okay, and that's what we're going to talk about today, because in order to effectively market yourself as an actor, you must understand branding and your brand and niche. And total side note, please, please, oh, please stop getting your headshots done, building your website, designing your business cards, postcards, resumes, all of it until you understand what you sell. You are wasting time and money and energy. Okay, you got to understand what you sell first, then you can package it. It is much easier to package it once you know what you sell. So really that's your job as an actor. So put that new hat on, that is your job as an actor is to fully understand inside and out what you sell. Because branding is the foundation and the key to everything. It gives your buyers, agents, managers, casting directors, directors, producers, writers, those are your buyers. It gives those people a, a set of expectations about the product that is offered, which is you. And you get to embrace that you are a product. You get to embrace your brand because that, my friends, is the key to getting your foot in the door and most importantly, to be remembered. Right? That's half the battle is to get called in again and again and again and be remembered. So I really invite you to think of your brand as a promise, okay? From the initial headshot that they see to the follow-up to getting your foot in the door, it is a promise that you are who you say you are, that you are consistent in the message and point of view that you are putting out in the world, that people understand who you are and get you instantaneously. So your brand is a promise and when they feel that, that builds trust in who you are and what you do. And that is how you will be remembered and get called in again and again. Really, your brand with the industry is a pinky swear. It is a pinky swear that you are going to be consistent and show up as you say you are. And that is super important because you got to remember that people are branding you even if you are not branding yourself. So you might as well take the power back in your career and empower yourself to allow people to see what you want them to see to get the roles that you want to get. Now, uh, in all my years of, of teaching and coaching, I've discovered, um, as uh, a lot of actors are on this branding journey, that there are three main traps that they fall into. And that's what I want to talk about today. So trap number one is listening to everyone else. So uh, do I have any people pleasers out there? Yeah, okay, a lot of us are. <laughs> so look, if you approach your brand only with how others perceive you in this business, you will get bitter and jaded and burnt out. And look, everyone wants to tell you who you are and who you should be. They do. Has anyone ever said to you, um, oh, you should do voiceover, you have a great voice, or you should play the power roles, or you should be the victim roles, or you should be the douchebag, you're totally the douchebag, right? Everyone wants to tell you who you are. And as people pleaser actors who want to work, we're like, uh, okay, just tell me who I am, tell me who you want me to be, and I'll do it. And then we start to put on all of this armor, right, to be this thing. 
And guess what? It doesn't last. Branding is not about putting on something to who you are. It's about peeling off the onion layers to allow people to see you. And yeah, we might punch up certain qualities of you based on sort of the trends of what's going on in the industry or how you are perceived, which we'll talk about in a second, but it gets to start with you and who you are. So if you are only listening to your agent, your manager, or other people in the business, you are doing yourself a huge disservice because you are leaving yourself out of the equation. And that is why I really believe people leave the industry is because they no longer uh, are putting themselves in it. They're only listening to what people say and what people see. So what you get to remember, the solution to this is remember that branding is your essence, your authentic self. It's who you are, no matter if you're here with me watching this video today, you're having coffee with your best friend or sitting down with your agent, there is a constant in you that is marketable. So I invite you to ask yourself um, some key questions as we're examining this piece, okay? So what roles do you want to play or you typically play? Nurturing mom, bitchy CEO, nosy neighbor. What are the roles that you want to play? What roles do you typically get cast in? What are the essences of these roles that you want? Is it dark? Is it gothic? Are they scary? Is it intense? And what, what are the essence of these characters in these roles that you are drawn to? What are the stories that you are drawn to as a human? Because a lot of your brand is found within that because there's a reason why you're drawn to it. Because brand is also the stories that you tell better than anybody else. Um, also ask yourself, what are your strengths? right? Um, you can't deny your own energy and who you authentically are and what you bring to the table as a human being as well as an actor. And how do you want to show up in this world? What makes you unique? Who are you authentically? And again, what are those stories that you want to tell? Have you ever been in the audition room and uh, someone says to you, God, you just do it again. Just show me you. <laughs> That's all they want. They want to see you and your point of view. That is huge. So please do not leave that out of the branding equation. Your sense of humor, how you perceive the world is your calling card. So you get to embrace that and let go of being what everyone wants you to be or what you think they want you to be, as well as trying to figure out, and when you go into an audition, well, what do they want? What can I give them? You get to be you. All right, trap number two that I find that most people fall into uh, is only listening to yourself. So this is the um, complete opposite of the first one. Um, so on the flip side, if you approach your branding with only how you want to be seen in this world, you will also get bitter and jaded and burnt out and it is not going to work. Okay, you can't uh, force people to see what you want them to see and then get mad at them when they don't see it. So you will not have a very happy or long career with that, okay? Because it's sort of like um, making them go, well, no, but I'm this. I want to be this. You've got to see this. But there's a lot of factors that go into how you are perceived, okay? So the solution to getting out of this trap is actually doing the work. And the, I call it the data research of how you are perceived in the world because that is how you might initially be cast, right? Especially if you're in television and going out for the co-stars or guest stars, or you're just starting off in theater, like you're gonna get cast with how you were perceived, right? Um, and you can't deny what that innately is. So just for example, um, I can't deny that I have a very um, strong bone structure um, and, and eyebrows, right? Those are features that I have. Those features lend themselves to playing um, bitchy, narcissistic, entitled, rich, wealthy characters. Um, I am neither bitchy, narcissistic. Um, I grew up extremely um, middle class, lower middle class. So that's totally not me. Yet this bone structure, this face is what um, is, is, is telling that to the world. Okay, so now I can't fight that. I can't deny that. So I get to embrace that and find a compromise within that. And then that leads us into the packaging and how do I package that to allow people to see what I want them to see. But I can't fight the bone structure, right? You can't fight how you in um, initially look so we got to understand the data research on how that is perceived, use that as information and figure out how to package that nicely with how we want to show up in the world. 
okay? But this um, this perception is key. And again, I'm just gonna say that word compromise again. We get to find the, the, the compromise between these two factors, right? And find the middle ground, find the sweet spot because that is where your brand lies. Because then you can start to guide people of how you want to be seen. And trap number three that most actors fall into is thinking that branding is about roles or genre. Now, I had a, a client who came to me to develop a strategy for a landing an agent. And that's a lot of stuff that I do with my clients is we create a campaign and a strategy to add new reps to your team. And uh, the first thing I asked her was, well, what's your brand? What do you sell? We would need to know that to start building a campaign. And she said, oh, I know my brand. I've done that work. I don't need to do that. Uh, my brand is Dr. Lawyer CEO. Okay, that is not a brand. Those are roles that you can play. I can play Dr. Lawyer CEO. Probably three quarters of you watching this video can play Dr. Lawyer CEO, but we would be very different Dr. Lawyer CEOs because it's about the essence of the characters and the story, right? So by thinking your brand is a role, you are not being specific enough. And vagueness isn't going to help you at all in this business. Because if you're not being specific, you're not uh, helping others to really see you and the stories you tell and the themes that you bring to your work. So what's the solution to this? Stop it. Just stop it. Stop thinking your brand is roles or genre. It's about your essence and the stories that you tell. So to, to put this in sort of a, a clearer picture for you, think of branding more of an iceberg. Now, when you would see an iceberg in the middle of the ocean, you see it sticking out of the water, you see the tip of the iceberg. But really beneath the surface is where the majority of the iceberg lives. So think of the tip of the iceberg as type, right? The roles, that's Dr. Lawyer, CEO. But the stories, the essence, the point of view is hidden underneath the surface. And that's your job to go deep, understand what that is, and bring those qualities out for people to see. That will make your brand three-dimensional that will make your branding understandable and specific so it's not doctor I play doctors what kind of doctors are you the sweet warm empathetic doctor are you the the doctor um, who fights for justice and challenges the hospital and their decisions are you the entitled doctor who's sarcastic and full of himself so you got to know that and start to notice where those essences and types of roles and, and stories, where they fall, because they are in comedy and in drama. It's not about picking one or the other, right? And you might have a penchant um, for one over the other, or you, or you might have goals that are more towards drama versus comedy. That's great. That's, again, being more specific. But just know when you do the branding work, it's not about choosing one. You will find those characters in different genres. Okay, and and because if you're looking at branding as roles or limiting yourself to genres, you are actually limiting yourself. So that's not what you want. We want it to be expansive, right? So by thinking of it in this way, it is a huge trap to limit yourself. And then you say, no, branding doesn't work. This branding thing doesn't work for me. I'm just gonna go be all things to everybody, right? Which again, doesn't work. Because branding is not about being one thing. It's showcasing all of you. And the clearer you are on your brand, the easier it will be to package that brand and the faster the industry will understand what you bring to the table. And that is how you build relationships. You can have the career you want. You can, I promise you. You just get to get you just get to give a little love to the business side of acting and have a clear strategized game plan to get you there. All right. Thanks for watching and we'll talk soon. Bye.